I'm Elizabeth and this is Table for 11. Today we're making meatloaf. This is large family style meatloaf. So I'm starting with five and a half pounds of meat. This is four and a half pounds of ground beef and one pound of ground pork. To that I'm going to be adding um, this is about 12 ounces of breadcrumbs. Um, this is leftover homemade bread, nothing special. And it's been in my freezer for probably six months. Um, that is, I, any leftover bread, I just uh, use up that way. I grind it in the food processor, and then whenever I need breadcrumbs, they are ready to go. And now we're adding the onions. This is one and a half medium yellow onions. Normally I would use sweet onions, but they're not in season right now. It's December and I just couldn't get sweet onions. Now the liquid ingredients and the cheese. Uh, that's not many people put the cheese in meatloaf, but I like um, the flavor that it brings. It doesn't really melt if you get the, the grated kind um, but it gives it a nice flavor. I'm adding 30 ounces of no sodium tomato sauce. Um, you can use, some people use ketchup. You can use all different things in your meatloaf. Uh, sorry, the things. Get the last bit out of there. And then we're adding five eggs. My uh, rule of thumb on this is that I add one egg for every pound of meat. I think it um, that's just the right ratio for getting, getting the egg to, to help hold the meat together and not be too held together so that the loaf becomes very dense. You still want it to, to come apart a bit um, so you can, it doesn't feel like you're slicing bread when you go into it. And then mustard. Um, just a little drizzle of mustard. Parmesan cheese. I'm going to add, this is going to be about, I'd say three quarters of a cup. And Worcestershire sauce. This is, in my opinion, the most important ingredient. It is not going to have a good flavor without it. If you don't have Worcestershire sauce, um, you can use soy sauce as a substitute, but it's not going to give you the same flavor. Um, I'm adding approximately a quarter cup. I like a lot of Worcestershire sauce. And then this is just salt, um, about a teaspoon. Um, the cheese, the mustard, and the Worcestershire sauce all have a decent amount of salt in them, so we don't need to add too much. And then about a teaspoon of black pepper. We're going to mix this up, and to do that, I'm going to start with a dough whisk. Um, this is a, a whisk for thick doughs, but you can use it for meatloaf, um, lots of different things. I'm going to mix it a little bit and then I might have to put on gloves and mix it with my hands. This is a whole lot of meatloaf. Um, we are a family of 11. We have nine children, and our oldest kids are teenagers. Our youngest is a toddler. And we like to have leftovers. It's a lot easier for me to make a bigger meatloaf and then have it as leftovers for for lunches rather than having to make sandwiches or come up with something else uh, to, for the kids and I to eat during the day for lunches. Uh, right now we are, we have all the kids at home because of COVID, they're doing remote learning. And having nine kids to feed is a lot. When I'm by myself and we're trying to do schoolwork and everything, it's so much easier to just have leftovers from the night before or from a few days ago if we want to break from it. I did want to mention with the meat that I'm using, this ground beef, some of it is a 
a regular kind of fine ground and that's from a side of beef that we bought several months ago and some of it is you can see it there it's a coarser grind I like having the combination of the two it gives the the meatloaf a better texture and something that's very important with meatloaf um, and with hamburgers and meatballs as well is that you need to mix it thoroughly but not over mix it um, if you over mix it it's going to get tough and dense and just not be as good as it could it'll be edible but not enjoyable so this is just about this dough whisk worked pretty well this is just about done it looks good if you're wondering if your seasoning is okay you can take a little bit of this cook it in a pan and taste it before you bake off the whole thing but I've made this a lot and I'm comfortable with with how it is Shake that, off. that over there I'm going to form it into a loaf in a pyrex dish you can bake it a lot of different ways. Um, this is just my preferred way. Um, I like it to be an actual loaf rather than just be pressed into a pan. Um, I do find that when I make it in a pan like this, I very often have to, there's a little bit that's not mixed at the bottom there. Um, when I do it in a pan like this, very often I have to um, drain off some of the liquid as it's cooking and that's normal that's okay this is going to be as you can tell this is going to be an enormous meatloaf we'll eat about a third to a half of this um, as dinner tonight and the rest will be leftovers. It'll either be a whole second meal, um, more likely it'll be just about done here. It'll be a few lunches plus another dinner. I'll put this bowl in the sink. Can you tell it's snowing outside again? Um, we are an American military family, but we're stationed up in Canada. We've been living here for several years and we absolutely love it here in Canada. Um, there are some things that are a lot more different from the United States than we expected them to be, but it's been, it's been a great experience for us and, and for the kids to get to live in another country and experience how things are there. Um, most of the times uh, when you're a military family and you move to another country, um, you're living on a military base, you're living on base, your kids go to um, an American school on the base, you're shopping at the American commissary, you know, the commissary, um, which is a grocery store on military installations. And it's not, it doesn't always feel like it's a different, a different world. Uh, so we are all done with this. This is our well, with everything in it, it's probably about a seven pound meatloaf. Uh, sometimes I'll put a ketchup glaze on this. I'm not going to do that today um, because not all the kids like it. It does, um, with a big meatloaf like this, uh, that you would make for a lot of people, uh, the ketchup glaze, it has to bake for so long that the ketchup glaze is going to um, caramelize and you're going to get a lot of uh, kind of almost burn spots. So. I might do maybe half of it towards the end so that the kids who don't like the ketchup glaze can have that side and, and everyone who likes it uh, can have the other side. I'll bake this at 325 degrees. This is going to take a solid two hours to bake. Um, I already have my mashed potatoes. I peeled and, and chopped up 10 pounds of potatoes. That's a normal amount of potatoes for us for one meal. We'll also have some leftovers from those and then